Hello. This is a sideshow. I'm Theodore Parker. And today is Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. Around here, the temperature is about 88 degrees. Today, our sunshine going up to 95. Feels like 97 when it gets there. So I was talking about mask. I have changed the color of this one from light to dark black. Um, as long as the positivity rate in this area or in your area is five percent is above five percent, I do suggest recommend that you wear the mask. Along with that, monkeypox vaccine is available. If you're in that community where it has been detected, then a vaccine is available for you to take advantage of. This has been a 4th of July weekend. Like so many other weekends in the past, that is being commented on, you know, You've had your mass shootings. You've had your law enforcement involvement in the death of a civilian suspected of a minor crime. Major crimes as well. Suspects taken into custody. Other suspects killed on the spot. Here in Kentucky, three Kentucky State policemen were killed along with a canine responding to a domestic violence call. The suspect was taken into custody. Pictures of him show a severely bruised face, contusions, etc. Enormous bail. And the weekend kind of unfolded like that. So I'm just going to take a few minutes. It took me a little bit of time to prepare and decide, but Let's take a few highlights because it's just multiple situations and incidents. So um, I want to touch on Brittany Brenner's case in Russia, uh, mainly because it's a hearing. She has not entered a plea yet. So she just had a hearing on Friday. She goes back for another one on the 7th. And uh, she has been detained since February 17th, which is a few about a week to the day almost before Russia started the war on Ukraine on the 24th of February. So here's just a few comments pertaining to that. Brittany Brenner's trial for cannabis possession in Russia began Friday with a hearing where prosecutors detailed the case against the WNBA star. Now, this is why I'm bringing this up. Being sufficiently aware that the movement of narcotic drugs is not allowed, noted in February 17, 2022, at an unspecified location, under unspecified circumstances, from an unidentified person, Brenner brought two cartridges for personal use, which contained 0 0.252 grams and 0 0.45 grams of hash oil, totaling 0 0.702 grams, the prosecutor said. So with all those numbers being thrown at you behind the decimal point, all totaled up, don't make a whole number to go in front of the decimal point. But being that being said, be that as it may, the proposal was to swap Brenner, Anthony Blinken, who's the Secretary of State, and add Paul Whelan, who was serving 16 years for an espionage conviction could be part of a trade for Russian arms trader Victor Bout. I mentioned him before as a merchant of death or death merchant who's serving 25 years 
in the U.S. for conspiracy to kill U.S. citizens and aiding a terrorist organization. So you may have been aware that um, Grinner, Brittany Grinner sent a letter to the president stating the how she felt being there in a Russian prison and wanting to come home and concerns about her wife and so forth and so on so that you can access as you will. The next big item, they went to the parade with their families to celebrate America. A legally purchased gun massacred them. The gun was used to massacre six people and wound dozens more at the Highland Park 4th of July parade was purchased legally. The city's mayor said as heartbroken families, friends, and family of the victims began to speak out about their agony in the aftermath of yet another mass shooting. On Tuesday morning, Highland Park Mayor Nancy Rodering used an interview on NBC's Today Show to reflect on the horrific slaughter in her quiet Chicago suburb. I don't know where the gun came from, but I do know that it was legally obtained, Rodering said. I think at some point this nation needs to have a conversation about these weekly events involving the murder of dozens of people with legally obtained guns. If that's what our laws stand for, we need to re-examine the laws. Duh, don't you think? And here's another one. Since we're just like constantly being, for lack of a better word, forced to accept somebody else's interpretation of the Constitution of the United States with its amendments, our opinions are suffering. In the sense that if you have an opinion that is for the safety and longevity of life of others, that opinion seems to suffer in the face of people. And I can't even find a rational answer, a rational reasoning for it. I mean, I've stated it on before. I realize I'm here on on YouTube now, and if you follow the program, the Sideshow, then you can access some of my most recent comments from Facebook, where it normally airs. But this is hard to take. Second Amendment being what it is, it says the right to bear arms. It doesn't specify what those arms should be. One politician did say, I could go back to the musket rather than have all of this going on. So I kind of agree with her because that is my substitute idea. It doesn't guarantee your right to bear arms does not guarantee you to have weapons of war. It just says right to bear arms. So moving on to another heartbreaker, the circumstances notwithstanding, why officers shoot what might seem like an excessive number of bullets at suspects? Akron, Ohio. What began as a routine traffic stop turned into a public safety issue, police said, when a shot appeared to have been fired from Walker's vehicle during just Jalen 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 Walker vehicle during the pursuit. Although authorities said that Walker left his gun behind when he exited his car to flee on foot, officers said that after unsuccessful attempts to use tasers, they feared the suspect was preparing to shoot when they fired their weapons. As you know, this case has hit the news doubly hard because um, it was a routine traffic stop or a traffic stop and in the process of processing it, other things started to happen. It was felt that a 
shot was fired from the vehicle, then went up on the highway to get away, and then came back into the city apparently and stopped and got out uh, on the passenger side. Then all these other things happened. Legally, the number of shots doesn't matter in such cases. LaRusso is a spokesman about this. The Supreme Court has agreed that under the Fourth Amendment, here we are again, Constitution of the United States, if officers are justified in firing at a suspect in order to end a severe threat to public safety, they need not stop shooting until the threat has ended. It's up to the courts to decide whether the officer's assessment of the threat was reasonable. Many officers today are armed with semi-automatic weapons that are able to discharge an entire magazine, usually about 15 or 17 rounds within seconds. So at this point, I will state that Jaden Walker had been fired at 90 times and was hit 60 from head to toe. Within seconds, said Abayashi, who also works as a use of force consultant to law enforcement agencies. So all those events over the weekend, you know, were tragic to say the least and definitely attention getting. And then there's um, one or two more I wanted to add. Ten-year-old girl in these United States um, needs an abortion. I don't even have to clarify the circumstances at 10 years old. Another situation that came up was a truck driver had abducted a seven-year-old girl and was riding around four days with her in his a uh, truck compartment assaulting her sexually. So that's just a spectrum of events that have gone on over the weekend or the past few days that the public has been subjected to and been made a part of because of decisions that come down from places like the Supreme Court and other people in authority or in position to say no or be reluctant or non-compliant and irresponsible when circumstances and facts are plainly in their face. I have looked at it, turned it upside down, sideways, backed it up, brought it close, and nowhere in my little pea brain can I come up with a reasonable answer for why decisions are made like this or lack of decisions are made like this by people in authority. So protests have been all over, gun ban, abortion hit, and Alito leaked the draft, or the draft got leaked from Alito's office and end up being announced by Thomas. So it's, um, then you got the January 6th hearings going on. So, July 4th weekend is over. It is Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. That's it, hashtag.